Hello friends, welcome to A View from the Garden, your weekly tech and interesting thing news show. Uh, and first up in interesting things, uh, this project comes from Neil.fun and it's called Wonders of Street View. So this will essentially drop you into a random place on Google Street View with interesting things happening. So you can see here you have uh, clones of the same people showing up. And if you click random, it will be dropped into another spot. And that's interesting, a <laughs> highway that goes to nowhere. Let's see what else we get. Uh, dolphins. Wow, wow. What else do we got? Ooh, a cave in Slovakia. What else we got? Uh, it's an at-at. <laughs> Look at that. So, so this is a fun little project, uh, and it, it's pretty cool what you can find on Google Street View. Uh, next up, uh, GoldenEye 007 has been released for Xbox Game Pass. So uh, the moment I saw this news, uh, nostalgia hit me. Uh, I remembered all the, the days of playing this on Nintendo 64. So it's awesome that it's coming to Xbox so I can relive those memories. Uh, next up, an interesting builds. Uh, this is actually not a tech build at all, except for maybe the 3D printing, but I, th I found it pretty interesting. So this comes from Tommy.sh, and it's called Adventures in Self-Watering Planters. So they wanted to be able to water their plants automatically, and uh, this self-watering planter essentially has a, a wick, like a, a piece of uh, rope that will uh, actually suck the water up so that the plant doesn't get overwatered and just sucks up the water that it needs. Uh, but they actually worked through prototyping the lid that would fit onto jars and they 3D printed it. Uh, so I thought this build was pretty cool. This came to us from Hackaday. Uh, and if you visit the Hackaday article, you can also see more info and see links to the 3D models that they printed. Uh, next up in YouTube videos, this first video comes to you from Hyperplexed. Uh, it's called The Ultimate Hacker Effect. So uh, they show you how to create uh, that uh, like deciphering text animation you might have seen before, like in hacker movies and stuff like that. Well, 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 look what we have here. All right, two minutes. Let's do this. Open up your browser. Now enter the following. You should see three boxes. So uh, Hyperplexed has a fantastic editing style and a really good narration style. Uh, and they actually, in two minutes, walk you through creating that hacker text effect. This video comes to you from Anthony Writes Code, uh, who is a Twitch streamer, twitch.tv slash Anthony Writes Code. Hello, and welcome to a brand new series. I'm calling this all code sucks, um, where I show you some real live code that I've seen running in production. And instead of making fun of it, we're gonna use this as learning opportunities. So this video is on uh, unnecessary conditionals where you could potentially just be using uh, the, the returned Boolean values themselves. So this is a pretty good, cool video, definitely check it out. Uh, this video comes to you from Honeypot. So Honeypot is uh, creating an, a documentary on React. It will be out in February. So this is a snippet of that documentary. And it's an interview with Andrew Clark on the creation of Redux. I honestly remember, I think my initial Initial contribution to kind of I guess Redux 1.0 is um, was the idea of a reducer. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we just made that term up. <laughs> um, uh, this this idea of like um, like a single function that would map all of your state to it was, it was very kind of I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've mixed feelings about it in retrospect, like the impact Redux had in the industry, but um, it was a, a very kind of like high flying like. Functional programming. Functional programming. Uh, so th this this interview is really cool. Um, and, and Andrew just talks candidly about what React was like back then in the ecosystem, and essentially how the Redux library came to be, which is pretty cool. Uh, next up in developers and tech, uh, this article comes to you from Ken Van Heron called Replacing a SQL Analyst with 26 Recursive GPT Prompts. So uh, in this article, Ken talks about how he worked at a company as an analyst. And uh, typically, every week, the one person would need to be on call. And that person would need to answer queries from like the product team or the operations team to essentially write some SQL code to get a specific insight that the, the people at the company were looking for. Uh, and they thought, well, what if we can use GPT-3 for this? Uh, so they essentially uh, pointed GPT-3 at the Crunchbase data set. So this is a data set that has info about investors, companies, fundraising. Uh, and then uh, they wanted to be able to ask questions about it. So uh, for example, uh, they could ask the question, how many seed deals were done in 2022? And then the bot responds with the answer and the SQL code it used to get that answer. Uh, um, and so Ken uh, goes through the ones that it got exactly right, but then he also talks about the ones that it got wrong. Um, and I think actually this is a good a good point to make about uh, sure tools like this are going to be very useful, but because you still need an expert to validate that SQL, you can't just hand this off to a non technical person. You still technically need a technical person to to validate that the SQL that was generated and the answer that was given was still correct. That said, this is still going to save a bunch of time, right? Because the person, the technical person doesn't have to write that SQL code from scratch, but a uh, fascinating article from Ken, definitely check it out. This article comes to us from Lee Robinson titled 2023 State of Databases for Serverless and Edge, an overview of 30 plus solutions and the emerging trends. Uh, so if you've ever worked with serverless or edge, you know traditional database connections won't work because you have many different 
uh, edge functions or serverless functions that are spinning up and you'll, you'll max out that connection limit. So there's a lot of different things you'll need to consider when choosing a database provider for your edge or serverless app. Uh, so he talks about some of like the hosted solutions, uh, some things in trends, he talks about established solutions and things that are rising. Uh, so this is a really good article with a really good breakdown of database options, so definitely check it out. Uh, this article comes from Vladimir Klepov, and it's titled Making Sense of TypeScript Using Set Theory. So in this article, Vladimir talks initially about some of the things that confused him about TypeScript, like why does the union type of 0 and 1 extend 0 evaluate to false, <laughs> um, or confusing subtype and supertype. And he lists a few other things here that confused him uh, that might confuse you as well, and, and then takes a step back and actually talks about uh, set theory. Uh, which is a mathematical concept, um, but it has a lot to do kind of with like uh, Venn diagrams. So he has some really good diagrams breaking down uh, the ideas in set theory and then shows how those ideas apply to TypeScript. Uh, so this is a really good read. It might actually clear up some confusions you've had about TypeScript, so definitely check it out. Next up in JavaScript news, Astro 2.0 has been released. Uh, one of the features that a lot of people are excited about are content collections. This essentially allows you to define collections like blog or newsletter or products. So your schema validation can say the items in this collection need to have a title and a description and a photo and tags, but only these tags are valid. You can define all of that with Zod. And then as you're working on your content inside of Markdown files, you'll actually get type completion that tell you if you forgot a property or, or you, sp you specified something wrong. It'll also give you informative error messages and also guide you through SEO best practices. There's a few other features that were introduced as well, so definitely check out this blog article and visit astro.build if you want to learn more about Astro. Uh, Shoelace has released version 2.0. actually just learned about Shoelace, uh, but it is a web component UI library uh, that's open source, and they just finally released version 2.0. So if you visit shoelace.style, you can learn a bit more about it. Uh, but it's pretty cool because, because it's web components, it's web native, you can add it as a CDN, no build tool required, and then you instantly get nice little components like this Shoelace button. And there are various other components you can use, and it works with some of your favorite front-end frameworks like React View or Angular. Next up in releases is Feathers version 5. So Feathers is an API and real-time application framework. It essentially allows you to spin up APIs very quickly that can be exposed over HTTP or over WebSocket. It has lots of built-in database adapters. Basically, you can write way less code and get a lot more done. So new in version 5, the entire framework has been rewritten in TypeScript from the ground up, uh, which gives fantastic TypeScript support and uh, the idea of full stack type safety. So version 5 introduces schemas. So the types you define on your back end are reusable in the client side library. So I'm pretty excited about this. And actually this Tuesday, January 31st, 2023, uh, David will be live on the Coding Garden, twitch.tv slash Coding Garden. Uh, he's gonna come on the show and talk about what Feathers is and we're gonna celebrate the version five release. And lastly, your public blue screen of the week. This comes to you from user Lamex Amara, and it is more so a public BIOS <laughs> than a public blue screen. But I think this is fascinating. Uh, this comes from uh, Shanghai, and uh, you just have people that are going about their day on their commute or whatever else, and uh, there's just a BIOS hanging out there. <laughs> so I think that's pretty cool. Coding Garden is brought to you by viewers like you. So if you found this interesting or useful or any of my other content useful or interesting, please consider uh, becoming a patron, a YouTube member, a Twitch sub, a GitHub sponsor, or check out some of the merch that I have to offer. That's all for this week's news. Uh, definitely check me out at twitch.tv slash Coding Garden. I'm live right now and I'll be live this week as well. So hope to see you in the chat and have a good week.